Hi everybody, welcome back to my Solops Film channel. I made these lovely pumpkins. This is actually a project from last year. You guessed that right, this party was wild. But now, without any further ado, let me show you how I made those two pumpkins. Here I've got my Arduino Pro Mini. You can use any Arduino in the lineup, but I'm using this one because it's nice and small. After that, in Arduino IDE, we select the board that we have, which as earlier stated is an Arduino Pro Mini. Following that, we select the processor we have. I will link the board that I'm using in the description so you can select the same. We start a new sketch after which I delete the text that's already in there. Then you can copy and paste the code that I will provide to you into the file and click upload. After which it should be uploading and done. Here's the very simple setup of how to connect your servo motors to the Arduino board. This is the bare minimum to make this project work, but if you're feeling daring and you want to make it just like my pumpkin with the fiery flickery eyes, this is the circuit for you. It has all the safety features and can be charged from a USB-C port. So here's our basic setup. Next I opened up 3ds Max and started making the basic tube where the eyeball would rotate in. Then I found something on Thingiverse that I could use as the eyeball. Thanks designer! The eyeball wasn't perfect though, I had to make some adjustments. Here I'm making a little arm that will serve as a leverage to move the eyeball with the servo motor. Next up I wanted to do a boolean which cuts a hole through the eyeball model, but since this model was full of open edges, I could not just cut through there, the boolean doesn't work when there's problems with the model. So I had to isolate some geometry and cut a hole there, then attach it back to the eyeball which was really a pain in the ass and took me ages. After that I cut some holes in the tube that I made, made a little platform on the side for the servo motor and printed it out as a test print. Then it was time to put the prototype together. I put a little copper rod through the eyeball, glued the extension arm to the back of the eyeball, made a little rudimentary connection wire and... The basics worked, but the eyeball was too loose in there and was dancing up and down. Then I opened up 3ds Max again and made the top part of the eyeball and the iris a little bit flatter because there were some pieces sticking out. Then on the side I added a ring so that the eyeball wouldn't dance up and down anymore. And with that done, it was finally time to print them out and to show you some extra cat video. Because it's my video and I make the rules. <laughs> She's literally scared of her own shadow, but not of the skeleton hand. She's even enjoying it. Look at that. Oh yes, skeleton scratches, oh yes! Brr, brr, brr. Then I made a little enclosure so that it would be completely enclosed so there's no moving parts sticking out, printed them all out, then I also enlarged one of the eyeballs to make one big giant eyeball for a single eyed pumpkin with the minimum infill to make it light. Then I made the enclosure for that, I'm not gonna bore you with all the details in the 3D design, you can just download it, print it, make it. There you go. Then I made some side pins to have the giant eyeball rotate on. And then I did a test of the giant eyeball, which worked perfectly as well. Same mechanism, basically. And with that done, it's finally time to start making the pumpkins themselves. First up, I put some advertisements, newspaper crap inside of plastic bags and made them shaped like pumpkins. Then I made some glue for the paper mache and added a couple of layers to start off with. I figured that using a blow dryer makes the layers in between dry faster and then you can apply more layers quicker because I don't like waiting. Then I had them dry overnight on top of something so it wouldn't stick to the countertop. Here you can see them the next morning nice and dry. Next up, sorry for the crap camera angle, I drew a rudimentary mouth and some teeth to get a feeling of where I wanted stuff. Then I took one of the cylinders I printed and used that as a template to mark the eyes positions. Then I used the shape of the plastic base to decide where I wanted to put the motors because all the motors will have to have their own space on the inside of the pumpkin. This way I'm sure they won't overlap on the inside. Then I drew the lid of the pumpkin. As you can see on the back I already made some other attempts that uh, I didn't like so I started over on the other side of the pumpkin. One more eye to the right of the mouth. And with that done, we have our six eyes. You can add more eyes because the Arduino can handle more servo motors, if you like, but I think this was uh, more than enough. Then I cut away the top of the pumpkin. And with that done, it's time to start cutting away the eyeballs. But here you can see how flimsy it is, so I should have really added another layer of papier mache to it. 
that's gonna look so awesome next up i'm cutting out all the other eyes then i'm using the printed tubes to see if the holes are big enough as i go when all the eyes are cut out it is time to put all the tubes in after which it's finally time to start claying here i'm making a clay snake which i'll put around all the tubes of the eyes i'm literally trying to do a voice over here wait for it Sorry for the distraction, we were claying. Well, this clay didn't stick that great, but I figured using water helped it to stick and I could also make it nice and smooth this way. I'm using very, very cheap clay that we can find here in the Action, which is a very cheap shop. I don't know if they have it wherever you are. This stuff wasn't the greatest, I have to say, but I made it work. Here I'm working to make the mouth a bit thicker than the rest which looked like this. Then I had it dry overnight and continued working on it the next evening. I started working on the teeth. This is probably not the best way to do it. I don't know, maybe there's like ways of cutting them out of cardboard and make it a bit stronger because this was quite fiddly, but it worked in the end. The only problem that I was having is that this is not really real clay, it's more like some paper type of stuff and every time water comes in contact even with the dry stuff it gets soft again. As you can see it all sags in and the mouth cannot support itself, that's why I put some tape underneath. Then I worked on the lid. I had it dry another night and in the meantime I could work on the pumpkin with one eye. I'll go over this very quickly because it's basically the same, just making a stem on there. Then cutting away the eye and then next up I removed its paper brain. Then I couldn't resist trying out one of the eyes inside of the socket of the first pumpkin, which already looked great. Then I really liked what I did with the other pumpkin, like with the thicker ridges at the top. So I'm upgrading the first pumpkin as well. Then I continue removing all the inside crap from the second pumpkin. I put in the cylinder and the eyeball to see if it all fits. Then I made the shape of an eye. So the two eyelids basically. And then I continued putting clay all over the pumpkin to make it more rigid. But you know how that works by now. Then after having both of the pumpkins dry overnight again, I used a spray can to put the first layer on the outside of the pumpkin so that the cheap paint that I'm using from the same shop wouldn't like absorb too much into the clay. Here I'm putting a first layer down of uh, some orange, after which it was time to make the teeth white and add some contrasty blood to the mix. There we go, because it was just biting into your soul. After that I used some brown and green to mix together, which gave a really nice effect. I'm really using some of the purer green, the top of the ridges, to be used as highlights, and then at the edges I used some brown. Then I made the edges of the eyes a bit darker and added some black to the inside so it would have a nice transition from the 3D print to the eye sockets. Then I made some darkness run outside of the eye sockets, basically the shadow ink of the sole of the pumpkin running down, if you get what I mean. Could also be me having a bit too much of my red wine doing the voice over here, but anyway, it's starting to look real scary, don't you think? Now that I can go to the laundry drying rack, then I'll start working on the one-eyed pumpkin. Also same story, some green, some brown, some black on the inside of the eye. And after that, painting the eyeballs, for which I first painted them white, then used some red as a transition from red to white, and then some blue for the veins. Same story for the big eyeball. Then on to painting the irises, after which I added them to the eyeballs. And that's how it looks. Then I found some bit of transparent plastic, cut it into little circles, added it to the inside of the eyeballs, like so. And I had to cut a whole bunch of them. Then I used a hot glue gun, put the plastic rings in there, added the iris on top of it. Same for the big eyeball. Added the big iris and then it was time for mixing up some epoxy. Here's component A and component B. Mix them very well together and then next up I pour them over the irises. 
and after the big eyeball was filled up I used the brush to lightly coat all of the outside of the eyeballs with some epoxy as well so that it would be nice and shiny giving it a wet look and yes I'm doing this on top of a license plate and this is the next morning I put them on some toothpicks so they wouldn't adhere to the license plate so much but still they stuck a bit look at this nice end result I'm really happy with them yes I'm imitating a servo motor <laughs> and then I used a fork to get the eyeballs loose before the resin completely hardened. And look at this awesome end result. I'm really happy with it. Now let me show you how I put the mechanism together. I figured out that it was extra handy to use a little bit of filament, put it in the hole, put it on fire until the light flame is on there, and then push it down with a piece of metal so that it would melt basically to the outside of the tube. Make sure the eyeball moves freely, which it did in this case. Then I used the little servo motor extension arms that I designed and glued them with some super glue to the provided arms that come with the servo motors. With these extension arms, the eyeballs have a broader range of movement. Then I put super glue to the side, added the servo motor to it, and put a clamp over it to have it dry. Now we're going to make the little metal extension arms. First we got a piece of wire that's 5 centimeters. Then we use half a centimeter to bend the hook facing upwards and another hook facing sideways. And it should look something like this. And for me it worked best if it was in the second hole, but you obviously have to experiment a bit what works for you. Then I hook it into the leverage arm on the eyeball and click the servo arm onto the servo. It's important to have the servo in its neutral position so that the eyeball starts in the middle. The code I will provide you will always center the servo on startup so you always know where the center point is. And with all of that done, the eyeball should have a free movement all over the range of the servo. Now let's add our back covers, after which I finalized all the motors and connected them up. Okay. okay, so this is the moment of truth. All the eyeballs are connected, hopefully the right way, because connecting servos the other way around uh, burns them out and I found it out the hard way. Here goes nothing. Aha! Awesome. On the side of the 3D printed case I provide some holes where you can put a ribbon cable through so you can nicely tuck away the wires. And with some of the remaining epoxy that I use for the eyeballs I painted over the black tears so they would be nice and shiny as if they were really wet. Another thing I did is spray paint the inside of the pumpkin in matte black. But now it's time to finally put some extra life into this pumpkin by giving it eyesight. This will be a little bit of a puzzle to make sure that nothing is in the way and it's gonna be a tight fit but with some fiddling around you can make it work. I'm using some hot glue to put the mechanisms in there and I'm really trying to put each eyeball in a different direction so they all move their own way making it extra eerie and strange. Following that I connected all the positive and all the negative wires of the servo motors together. Red being positive and the browns being a the negative. Then I put some heat shrink over it and all of those cable bundles come together in a red and a blue cable. That will then run to the output of the step down converter. Then I'm connecting all the yellow signal wires from the servos to the Arduino port 2 to 7. And there we go. After that I tried to keep everything a bit neat with cable ties and found a good position for the potentiometer knob for the light. I drilled a hole, took my prototyping light from my previous project, my solumen light, and I put it into the pumpkin. I put a knob on there and that was already pretty great. Then I drilled a hole next to it for the on-off switch for the Arduino, which will turn off and on the eyes. Then I permanently installed the knob for the light. And as you can see, the light is just hanging there in the middle now, but I tied it together with some other cables so that it would shine right onto the eyes and out of the mouth. As you can see, this is a really cool effect. And uh, since it has this flickery flame effect, it's really like there's a candle in there, which I really love. Then I proceeded uh, putting the cables on to the on off switch for the Arduino, added some black paint uh, like I did with the eyes so it would really blend in. Look at this black oil-like substance running out. And yes, with that done, ladies and gentlemen, this is the result of the first pumpkin. Let's now move on to finalizing the one-eyed pumpkin. First of all, I removed its guts through the eye and through the bottom. Then I added the 3D printed plastic pins to hold the eyeball in and it should be moving freely. Then added some super glue to the extension arm and also added this to the back. Then I made a copper connection wire, added it back to the servo motor and everything worked as expected. 
Then I used some pieces of cork that I uh, glued onto the base and onto the pumpkin to center the eyeball in the pumpkin. And yes, I used the hot glue extensively here, because the eyeball has quite some torque if it moves left and right, and I wanted it to be properly fixed. Later on, I added a step-down converter to have the server run on 6 volt, like the other pumpkin. I rewrote the code in combination with ChatGPT, thank you, to have the pumpkin eye move slower and more surprisingly. And with all of that done, this is my final result. I am super proud of these, I really love them, and they really lift my Halloween party to the next level. I hope I provided you all with enough details to make them yourself. And if you like what I'm making here, please subscribe and, uh, and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I have a new project to show you all. If you want to know how to make your own projector for a Halloween party, or rather make your own mood light, please go ahead and watch my other videos. Bye!